The exciting story begins with a very ugly lady whose face was so disfigured that no one would come near her. In fact, this lady was not a normal human but a dangerous vampire living in caves and leading her life in this way. This vampire's job was to attack passersby and drink their blood. However, at this moment, the vampire was in immense pain because she was about to give birth. She quickly gave birth to a child who, like her, was a vampire. Although all mothers are usually very happy to see their newborn child, the vampire lady was not happy at all upon seeing her child. This was because she had heard a prediction that her son would grow up to walk the path of righteousness and would kill his own father, who was the world's greatest vampire. Thinking about this, the vampire lady decided to kill her son. So, she took out a knife and started to plunge it into her son's body. But just as she was about to do this, a group of church fathers entered the cave to save the child. They quickly captured the vampire lady and separated her from the child. The fathers knew that the lady's child was also a vampire, but they believed that if he was given proper education and direction, he could be of use in the future. For this reason, the fathers were protecting the child. However, the vampire lady became very angry. She realized that the fathers would kill her using the cross, so she cursed her own son, saying that when he grew up, he would become a dangerous vampire, causing destruction everywhere just like his father. Hearing this, all the fathers became very angry and plunged a sharp cross into the body of the vampire lady. The cross caused her immense pain, and she writhed in agony until she eventually died. For now, the church fathers took the child with them as they needed to raise him and use him for their purposes. However, a little later we see that in the same cave the lady was not actually dead. Instead, she was pretending to be dead. Slowly, she began to remove the cross from her stomach. And then the story continues, showing the three church fathers taking good care of the young vampire child. They wanted this vampire child to help humans instead of following the wrong path. To achieve this, they started changing the child's body so that he would look like a human and grow up to do good deeds like humans, rather than evil ones like his family. The three fathers worked hard to make changes to the vampire child's body, so he would resemble a human. This task required a lot of effort, and they named the vampire child Redu. We are now shown a time many years later, where Redu has grown old, but he spent more than half his life fighting against evil vampires and demonic beings while walking the path of righteousness. Even today, Ridu continues his efforts to eradicate evil completely. He roams with his companions, constantly working to reduce evil in this manner. However, one thought always lingers in Ridu's mind. Who are his mom and dad? He knew he belonged to a vampire family, but he needed to discover his dark truth. Now, Redu is shown with his companions, heading towards a dangerous vampire named Willard. Willard is so ruthless that he never leaves any humans alive. But Redu quickly reaches Willard and asks him for the liquid that, once consumed, removes the vampire's need to drink human blood. In other words, it completely eliminates the vampire's thirst. Redu wanted this because, despite being a vampire, he didn't want to kill humans or drink their blood. So he approached Willard to ask for the magical liquid. Willard was drinking a lady's blood at that moment when he suddenly stood up, very angry. Willard's response was straightforward. I will not give that liquid because it belongs to me, and I do not share my belongings with anyone. However, Ridu didn't want to leave empty-handed. So he said, no matter what happens, I will take that liquid with me. At that moment, Willard ordered one of his companions to attack. With incredible speed, the companion killed one of Redu's men. In an instant, a fierce battle broke out between Willard and Redu. Both of them displayed their sword-fighting skills, trying to defeat each other. Their companions were also fighting fiercely, trying to kill each other. Even though Willard was a very evil vampire, his fighting techniques were not effective against Redu because Redu had learned these techniques from humans, and they were quite advanced. After fighting for a while, Redu started to gain the upper hand over Willard. When Willard realized he couldn't win, he decided to flee. In the next moment, he turned into black smoke and flew away, disappearing from the scene. With Willard gone, Redu went and retrieved the magical liquid. Redu also noticed that only one of his men had survived, indicating that they had suffered significant losses. 
As Ridu and his companion were about to leave, another vampire appeared before them. This vampire said to Ridu, You cannot leave like this. I can see the evil within you, but it seems your mind has been brainwashed. Ridu asked the vampire, Who are you? The female vampire revealed, I am Willard's wife, and I cannot let you leave with that liquid. However, as she got closer to Ridu, she realized that he was her son. The female vampire explained, You are my son and Willard's. I gave birth to you many years ago, but at that time some church fathers came and took you away. They wanted to guide you towards the path of goodness to eradicate evil completely. Otherwise, according to my curse, you were destined to become an evil vampire like our family. Ridu didn't trust anything the vampire said because he couldn't understand what to believe. But the vampire was convinced that he was her son, and she predicted that the evil within him would eventually surface. After sharing all this, the vampire disappeared into thin air. Ridu managed to take the liquid, determined to leave with it. As Ridu and his companion were about to leave, Ridu thought they should explore the castle a bit more. They continued to move forward and eventually found a very beautiful lady inside a cell. Her name was Helena, and she was hiding there with her daughter. Helena pleaded with Ridu, saying, Please save me and my daughter, or that evil vampire Willard will come and kill us both. Moved by her desperate pleas, Ridu decided that they should take both of them along to save their lives. However, Ridu's companion was skeptical and warned, We shouldn't trust anyone so quickly. They could also be vampires plotting to kill us. To confirm his suspicions, Ridu's companion drew his sword, intending to test if the mother and daughter were vampires. Ridu quickly stopped his companion, holding him back because he didn't want to harm them. Ridu then managed to open the cell and brought Helena and her daughter out. The four of them spent the night around a bonfire since it was too dangerous to travel through the forest at night. They waited for morning, and from then on, Ridu included Helena and her daughter in their team, starting a long journey together. After traveling for quite a distance, they took breaks to rest. The night passed in the forest, and when morning came, Helena seemed to be in great pain because the sunlight was falling on her face. Seeing this, Ridu and his companion realized that this usually happened to vampires because they couldn't tolerate sunlight. Ridu immediately moved Helena's daughter away, suspecting that Helena might be a vampire. However, Helena assured them, that's not the case. I was imprisoned in their cell for so long that I haven't seen light in ages. And now that the light is hitting my face, it's causing me discomfort. Helena managed to convince Ridu and his companion that she was not a vampire and pleaded to stay with them, fearing that Willard would come and kill her if she was left behind. Ridu understood Helena's plea and decided to let her and her daughter stay with them. However, Ridu's companion was furious, questioning how Ridu could change so quickly. Where is the Ridu who used to kill demons and vampires at first sight? But Ridu had made up his mind to protect Helena and her daughter. Seeing this, Ridu's companion decided to leave him and take a different path, unable to continue with Ridu under these circumstances. With this decision made, Ridu continued through the forest, traveling mostly at night to avoid the sunlight that troubled Helena. Their journey was long, and one night, while Helena was sleeping, Ridu noticed a bite mark on her leg. It was Willard's mark, indicating that he had bitten Helena and turned her into a vampire. Realizing that Helena had lied from the beginning, Ridu confronted her. Helena broke down in tears, explaining that she had no choice. If she had revealed she was a vampire, they wouldn't have helped her. Ridu picked up a sword, ready to kill her, but Helena pleaded for her son's sake, begging Ridu to spare her life, as her son would have no one left. After much pleading, Ridu relented and couldn't bring himself to kill her. Instead, he suggested she drink the magical liquid, which would significantly reduce her desire to drink human blood. Helena began consuming the magical liquid regularly to suppress her urges, fearing she might harm her son. Ridu also drank the liquid to stay normal. He ensured Helena drank the liquid daily, but one night he forgot to give it to her. That night, Helena became extremely agitated and attacked Ridu, starting to drink his blood. Helena also made Ridu drink her blood, 
awakening the dormant vampire within him. Shortly after, Willard arrived at the scene to retrieve his magical liquid. He attacked Helena, using his dark powers to capture her and her son, and teleported them away. Redu, now fully transformed into a vampire, was left in immense pain and wandered through the forest, weakened. A short while later, Redu encountered his former companion, the one who had left him earlier. Redu quickly approached him and explained everything. How Helena had deceived him, that she was actually a vampire and had hidden this from him. Redu's companion felt sorry for him but couldn't do much, as he had warned Redu earlier about the dangers, which Redu had ignored. Now, his companion chose to continue his solitary journey, leaving Redu entirely alone without support. Desperate, Redu pleaded with his companion, asking him to kill him, as he didn't want to become a vampire again and harm people by drinking their blood. After much persuasion, Redu's companion agreed. As Redu lay down, his companion took a sharp weapon and thrust it into Redu's body. However, even after the deadly attack, Redu didn't die. Both Redu and his companion were shocked and confused about how this was possible. Suddenly, Redu's mother appeared from behind and killed his companion. She approached Redu and explained, You didn't die because you're immortal. No one can kill you. You possess many powers you have never explored. Redu's mother assured him of her help and immediately teleported him to her base. Redu's mother decided to turn her son into a demon. She healed his wounds and began training him to learn all the dark powers he was destined for. She gradually started to control his mind, making him do whatever she wanted. Redu, out of control, began doing exactly what his mother taught him. Slowly, his powers increased to the point where he became half-demon and half-vampire. The evil within him, which was dormant, started emerging, and he mastered all the skills his mother taught him. Using those skills, he became incredibly powerful. Redu, who used to save people from demons, was now hunting down innocent people and killing them. The demon inside him had fully awakened, which might have been his mother's intention all along. Despite everything, Redu missed Helena and felt very lonely because he had grown fond of her in such a short time. He desperately wanted to find her. So, one night, he tricked his mother and escaped to search for Helena. However, after a long search, he neither found Willard nor Helena. He felt extremely lonely and many years passed this way. Redu was deeply depressed, and this depression made him angry. He decided to form his own team, hoping to keep himself busy by sharing his thoughts with them. If he could build a strong team, he could fight against Willard and rescue Helena. With this determination, Redu traveled to a village where he saw a brother and sister who were singers named Lee and Linda. As soon as he saw them, he decided to make them his partners. After their performance ended, Redu approached Lee and Linda and said, If you want to become immortal from normal humans, so no one can kill you, come with me, and I'll give you all the powers. Although Linda was hesitant about all this, her brother Lee agreed from behind. Since both Lee and Linda wanted to become immortal, Redu approached them and bit them, turning them into vampires by feeding them his blood. He brought them to his castle, where he kept them imprisoned. At first, Linda thought they were trapped, but slowly she realized how amazing it was to be a vampire. They gained immense powers and became immortal. Redu brought different humans to them so they could feed and taught them dark powers, making them stronger and fully prepared to help him fight Willard and rescue Helena. Over time, Lee and Linda fully transformed into vampires, gaining abilities that allowed them to hunt and feast on their prey with ease. Their powers grew to match Redu's level because he was the one training them. Redu believed that with them in his team, no one could defeat him. However, when no one was in the castle, a sorceress approached, armed with a weapon capable of killing vampires. The church had sent her to kill Redu. Fortunately, Lee and Linda were not present, making the sorceress's task easier. As she entered, she found a woman in a cell whose blood Lee and Linda had drunk. The woman was on the verge of turning into a vampire. The sorceress felt pity and used her dagger to kill the woman, preventing her from becoming a vampire. However, Redu, Lee, and Linda arrived and were furious at what the sorceress had done. Redu, 
moving with incredible speed, attacked the sorceress, causing her to drop her weapons, which could kill vampires. Seizing the opportunity, Lee and Linda picked up the weapon and, for some unknown reason, pointed it at Ridu. Lee and Linda now wanted to kill Ridu together. Ridu had bitten the sorceress and turned her into a vampire by feeding her his blood. Furious that Lee and Linda had turned against him, Ridu demanded an explanation. Lee declared, We can't be your slaves forever. We want freedom, so we're leaving. Although Ridu tried to restrain Lee, Linda used her flute to produce sounds that caused Ridu significant pain, forcing him to release them. In the next moment, Lee and Linda vanished, escaping to a distant place. Months passed, and Ridu couldn't find them. But one day, he finally encountered the siblings. Ridu demanded to know, where is the weapon I can use to kill vampires? Lee and Linda revealed that the Vampire Queen had taken it from them. They offered to take Ridu to the Vampire Queen. Inside, Ridu was shocked to discover that the Vampire Queen was none other than Helena. She had become incredibly powerful and managed the entire kingdom alone. When Ridu asked how this had happened, Helena explained everything. She said, I never wanted my son to become a vampire, so I left him in the human realm. After Willard fell into a deep sleep in the basement, the responsibility for the kingdom fell into my hands, making me the Vampire Queen. Helena promised Ridu that she would give him his weapon and provide a magical liquid that could restore him to normal. In exchange, Helena wanted Lee because she was fond of him, and Ridu had turned Lee into a vampire. Without Ridu's permission, Lee couldn't stay with her. After much consideration, Ridu agreed to the deal and gave Lee to Helena permanently. However, Ridu had other plans in mind. Taking the opportunity, Ridu sneaks into the basement and approaches the coffin where Willard is sleeping deeply. To ensure Willard remains trapped, a sacred sword had been placed beside him. Ridu deliberately removes the sword, awakening Willard, who starts screaming loudly. But Ridu knew exactly what he was doing. Using the sword, he kills his father, Willard, with repeated attacks, fulfilling the long-predicted prophecy that Ridu would be the one to kill his father. Helena, who was unaware of these events until it was too late, now faces Ridu's wrath. Ridu attacks Helena, trying to kill her as well. Helena, wielding the weapon that could kill vampires, injures Ridu by attacking his leg with it. Ridu becomes extremely weakened, though he does not die because the weapon was supposed to attack his stomach. Infuriated, Ridu uses his other weapon to severely injure Helena and eventually decapitates her. Ridu has finally taken his revenge. Linda helps Ridu out, as he is unable to walk, but Ridu is still very angry with Linda and Lee. He tells Linda, I am no longer your master. You are completely free and can go wherever you wish. Linda is overjoyed by this, but just then, the same sorceress now turned into a vampire, appears before them. She is furious with Ridu, as he was responsible for her transformation into a vampire. With a weapon in hand, she moves towards Ridu to kill him. The sorceress fires at the wounded Ridu, but Linda intervenes, taking the attack directly and dying in agony. Ridu is devastated by Linda's death, crying for the first time over someone who had deceived him. In his loneliness, Lee and Linda were his only companions. The sorceress reappears in front of Ridu, ready for another confrontation. The sorceress points at Ridu and says, I will not kill you. Instead, I curse you to live your entire life in solitude, suffering every day, with no one around you. Your life was better when you were normal, but those who choose the path of evil always end up in ruin. After delivering this curse, the sorceress leaves. Ridu watches helplessly as his only member, Linda, dies. He knows he is immortal and cannot die, but the curse ensures he will spend his entire life alone. There could be no greater punishment for Ridu. He reflects on how evil deeds lead to dire consequences. And with that, our adventure story comes to an end.